probably the most important thing is that each young person feels valued in their community, in the, it, valued in the, the, their dealings with the institutions that they come in contact with, that they feel valued in, in school or in the workplace or in sports organisations, that they have some connection to the wider society. I think that the, one of the big issues facing young people in many countries is they feel quite cut off from the adult world, that they don't feel they have a clear place, that they have any influence over how things develop in the country in which they live. And South Africa is a very young country. It, it must be one of the youngest countries in the world in terms of the percentage of the population who are young. So it's a big challenge, I think, to find ways to open up involvement for young people in their communities, in their clubs, in their schools, in their faith communities, in the institutions. And I think every institution, from a school to the government departments in Pretoria, to hospitals, to healthcare, to sporting organisations, all have to think about how to open up opportunities to involve young people who are not involved at the moment, to reach out to young people, to, to create opportunities for them to say what they would like. It's not one, it's something for adults to sit in a room and to say, what do the young people need? And make decisions about what they think the young people need and then go and offer that to the young people and then be puzzled why the young people are not responding. I think the first thing that has to happen is that there have to be conversations between young people and adult institutions and adult groups in which the adults are saying to the young people, tell us what you see as what you need or want. What, what is the future of South Africa from young people's point of view? How do things have to be different? Tell us how you see things being different. And let's start with things that we can do something about right now in our working context. So, the school management and the school principal and school teachers listening to what the students have to say about how to make the school experience a more positive experience, how to make learning more positive, how to maybe st change styles of teaching, to introduce new ways of learning, to involve young people more in maybe discipline or other issues where they can have uh, influence and maybe have some good understanding of some of the realities facing young people. How can the school be more connected to the community? How can the school serve the community? Maybe young people have many ideas on that, how to make uh, the school more interesting in terms of what it offers outside the main curriculum. I think this could lead to, for example, the school institution, the school as an institution, being a more energetic, energised, interesting place, both for the young people, but also for the adults who work there. So I think that one of the challenges is helping to release the energy the, the enthusiasm and the energy of young people. It, South Africa needs that energy and that enthusiasm to develop. It's a huge resource. It will transform the country if it's harnessed and mobilised in the right way. So the challenge for adults in positions of authority in communities, in schools, in other organisations, is to tap into that energy. And the first way to tap into that energy is to to listen to the ideas and experiences of young people, asking young people, how is life today for you? Listening carefully to what they say and asking them then, how could life be different for you? What ideas have you got? Practical ways to make life better and different for the young people involved and for other young people. Now, obviously we have to think about the economic situation and we have to think about the job opportunities for young people. But maybe we also have to try to harness uh, the talents of young people in terms of maybe creating jobs for themselves in various fields, maybe where young people have special knowledge and talents, uh, in small businesses, in uh, you know, using mobile phones or music. Or there, there are various fields where maybe computers where young people have extra knowledge and know-how. Can those skills be used to help develop opportunities for the young people, but also for the communities of which they are part? So I think the conversation needs to start with young people about how they find life in their immediate community.
community today, what the issues they face as they see, what the issues are as they see them, and what ideas they have about making things better. So listening, listening to young people, valuing their opinion and supporting them in trying to implement some of their ideas. I think that would be a, a very important uh, step forward and I think could help to transform the communities of which they are part, both socially and economically, that uh, there could be more energy released into helping make schools and communities better places and maybe some of the young people's ideas could also help to generate jobs for young people, which of course is terribly important because at the end of the day probably the thing most young people want most is a steady job, a steady source of income which they can feel uh, proud about and which they can feel represents a steady prospect for the future. In that way then they become committed to the community and to the society and they feel part of that community and society. But it all begins with listening to the experience of young people and moving away from a model where adults discuss young people as a separate, almost separate tribe uh, who they make decisions about without really involving and listening to the young people.